Hey guys, today we're going to take a look in on my African night crawlers in my vermi bag little mammoth. Today I'm going to have a discussion of why I love and sometimes hate my continuous flow through worm bag. First things first, let's get in here and see what they are doing. This plastic has been keeping it nice and uh, moist in there. You can tell all the worms like hanging out on the top of this. I already did the harvest this morning because uh, quite honestly that's not always a very good uh, show of me hanging upside down. But if you want to see that I do have another video where I show you how I harvest it. The first thing about the uh, worm bags is that I love that they're so big. I mean they have a huge area here to uh, you know expand in a lot of area for me to add food to it. So what's not to love? The more room, the more garbage you can get rid of, and also the more worms you can have. That is definitely something I love about it. One of the things that is kind of uh, awkward is that I am a 5'5". Five five. There's a good amount of worms there. You don't see an African night ball. African night ball? No. African night crawler ball. Got some pot worms in there. Um, one of the things I don't like is that being at my height, it is a little inconvenient because I am often sitting or standing on my tiptoes to get into the bin here to see things. They seem to be enjoying that uh, heater that I have sitting up there. There you go. Um, also, it is, uh, for as tall as it is, it is also deep. And so sometimes when I go in there to harvest, it's a little uncomfortable to be standing on my head. Uh, this one is better than the Urban Worm Bag. This is the Vermi Bag Little Mammoth. And I got to build my own stand for it. Uh, I also have a video for that if you want to go look at the, the playlist for the Vermi Bag. And so, you know, it is a little bit awkward to uh, try and harvest these sometimes because they are so close to the ground. This one's better because it is uh, a little bit taller because I made the stand a little bit taller. Okay, looks like they've uh, eaten most of the food. Uh, it is a little hard for me to tell if they've eaten the cow manure I put in here. So I'm just going to assume that when I come in here every three weeks that uh, they're ready for another feeding. That's If anybody feeds uh, cow manure or whatever, uh, let me know how can, I mean, I know I've asked this before and I did look at it underneath the microscope and saw that uh, African nightcrawler poop, if you saw my short, uh, it looks like little tiny mouse turds. But uh, even with my readers on, it's hard to tell the difference between that and uh, cow manure. So I'm just gonna assume they've eaten everything. Another point is the, I, one of the problems that I'm having in my area is that during the heating season and the air conditioning season, it is a little bit difficult to manage the moisture in these bins. They are made out of uh, fabric, after all, which is good in some ways and not great in others. Uh, I have been doing better. Uh, I've been adding moisture to it every week, but it's not so much a set it and forget it kind of a bin because it is fabric and the moisture does uh, get out of it. And uh, unfortunately, you know, sometimes like when I was uh, stuck on vacation due to COVID, um, there was nobody to add moisture to the bin and I did lose quite a few of my worms. So you do have to check on these bins quite often to make sure that they do have the adequate amount of moisture. And then sometimes when you add too much water or a very um, wet feeding, it can seep out through the bottom. There's my little temperature indicator. I'm trying to keep these guys at about 80 degrees, 75 to 80 is what the books say. And uh, you know, so if you give them a very, very wet feeding, then you can also have the same problem where the moisture actually leaks right out through the bag. And um, although it's not a huge problem that I run into often, you know, I do have to clean the sides and the bottom of the bag with a, a dilute vinegar um, solution and a little bit of a uh, scrub brush. Well, as far as I can tell, they've eaten all the food food and whether or not they've gotten anywhere with the, with the manure is anybody's guess. It does feel nice and warm right next to this. And this is where I've been adding all my water to. 
So, uh, uh, yeah, tea bags that are not compostable. Yeah, some of the fancy tea that comes in flavorings doesn't have compostable tea bags. Uh, need to quit putting those in there, or at least break them open and let the worms have the good stuff. Another thing that is really nice about these uh, African night or not the African night crawlers, um, but the bag, the CFT systems, the worms that you see all right here, uh, this is where they stay. They don't go very deep. So when it's time to harvest the bag, then all I have to do is go under there, undo the zipper, and um, there's no more worms left. All there is is uh, nice castings that are pretty dry, really. All right, I'm gonna put that back in there and let's get them a little bit of food. Okay, so they are going to get some leftover spaghetti here. Little bit of a forbidden food, but I think the African night crawlers can take it. It's a big system. So one of the nice things just in general about the system is that it does have a zipper on it. And um, basically it's, it's really good for keeping the worms in. It is the entire reason that I have this bin is because of the African night crawlers. And because in my area I do have a great deal of uh, heavy truck traffic and the worms do get freaked out and do climb the walls. And I had a, uh, some trees removed the other day and there was a lot of heavy machinery. And I came in here the next day and uh, a few of the worms actually managed to escape even through the zipper. Um, they must have been working pretty hard. But the zipper keeps out, you know, gnats and bugs, um, cats. Although I will warn you, it doesn't keep out husbands. Opposable thumbs, you know, zippers. There's nothing you can do about it. Maybe zip tie it if you want to try and keep your spouses out of the worm bag when they want to go fishing. So let's get them some bedding. Okay, so we've got them a good amount of bedding here. And then let me get them some water. This bedding did not stay as... Uh, moist as it normally does. I think the lid came off of my bedding container, so I'm really gonna have to hit it. Make sure that I get the area near the, the heating pad that I have over here that is a seed starting tray. And then make sure that I get a good amount of liquid. Now with me adding this much liquid, there is the possibility that I am creating my own problem with the deposits at the bottom. But as I showed you earlier, it is easy enough to fix with a little scrub brush and a little vinegar water. Doesn't bother the worms because the worms are inside the bin. Okay, then I'm just going to give them some of their worm chow on top of here. That will make the bedding a little bit tastier. I can kind of work it in a little bit. As you can tell, I've switched sides, left the uh, worm chow on the opposite side of the camera. But this will last them for another couple of weeks. I will come in here every week and make sure the moisture is okay. But uh, other than that, these guys are good to roll until the next time you see them. Now the African night crawlers do have their own playlist, which I will link over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video over here. All right guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.